desperate. I mean, right. this is the <laughs> lowest gain file. I have no idea what will happen if it drops below. There's no, there's no gain, gain, fine, uh, gain fan line anymore. Except this. <laughs> nah, it, 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 it will probably hit a support line. And, uh, yeah. Let's see. Pop. Okay, okay, this is the end of the GAN fan line. Well, this is the last GAN fan line because, you know, if I look at the GAN fan, yes, yes, this is the last line. Yes. But I'm not saying if it drops, it goes underground. I'm not saying that because you still have enough support, support lines. Here. I mean, this, this right here, this price action. It's actually a, a support area because it had price action. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So I will just leave it there because the price is very close. I'm just gonna leave it there. Okay. So for the people who are new to the TA, this type of TA, I placed the Gantt fan lines. I did the horizontal and the vertical lines based on the crosses. The horizontal are the um, resistance and support, but also, of course, the trading ranges and the verticals um, are actually trading ranges as well, but more as in yeah, a timeline or a box wherein the price moves. Uh, uh, Alex, uh, did you make this black line uh, by considering like support and resistance, the price ranges, or just you draw, uh, draw it randomly, like to? What do you mean? I draw it randomly. You mean the color? Yeah, a yeah. black a box. That, black box that you draw. You can choose everything you like. It's for me, yeah. you know. I. Uh, focus better if it's no black sé cómo, pero but if if you have a black background blue. yeah i would sí, no suggest sea. another color of course you know but for me i would choose white <laughs> because yeah black black and white works for 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 me but fate does uh, pink or, or purple whatever it's just a preference okay so actually i don't have to draw this line because the price is not going there anymore um yeah so this is the daily right okay so we have a lot of days here i mean this is in ha half a year so i don't need, need to draw all these lines here and you know map it out i mean this this area is where it's going to happen for for the coming half year and of course if we continue the bull run, you know, it, it could do something like that. Okay. okay, so this actually is a manual GAN fan. We we saw the automated one. <sighs> but that one takes the, all the point I took and the top takes the top. And it actually does the same thing, yeah, but I find it less accurate for a long period of time because yeah, you have just less lines and, and this one moves with, with the trend. If you change to the one hour for, for example, it just takes the, uh, the high and the low of the, uh, yeah, the previous price action. So that's a week or something. That's still good. Yeah. I mean, it tells me the green line for now is the support. And this is the fall back. And if it really drops, then this is the support. And it could move down between these lines. So that's how I'm going to finish section. Oh, 
Okay, so now what we have done, we have mapped the, the, the price action into trading ranges. Okay? Yes. And so actually we do not have to look at the rest anymore because we are interested in these lines. Okay? We already have plenty of room over here, so... Yeah, I mean... Most of the time, you look at the previous price action to draw your supports mm -hmm. and your trading ranges and stuff like that. But we have already mapped it based on yes. uh, math. So these these are not my own lines. I did not, you know, see this. I just placed the GAN fan twice and crossed it. And the first time I did it, I wasn't even sure it worked that that way. <laughs> I just found out by uh, accident. Okay. So the, the the moral of the story is just go experiment. Yeah. Yes. Just just do things outside of the box because you will yeah, start to um, notice things and yeah, discover things. And that's what makes it fun for mm -hmm. for me. So what I also discovered you have a FIP circle. It's called the Fibonacci circle. Uh -huh. And I will make it black for now. And of course, right now you don't see a thing, so I'm going to silence this. Yeah? So now it's more clear. Yes. So that's why you want to silence it. Okay, so this circle, okay? I'm just gonna recap. We are not on the log scale, all right? We can zoom in and zoom out the way we like. It doesn't matter. And when you take the um, FIP circle, you hold it so you can move it and press shift. See how it changed? Mm, yeah. Yeah, you want to use the shift. And then you place it, you place the one, the one ratio on the top and the other one ratio you place at the bottom just like we do with the yeah. horizontal lines uh, I haven't seen that one ratio, where is that? I will highlight it for you you see this one? Yes, yes. yeah, so it goes you know, all the way around and this is the same line. So I put the uh, top of the wig on the one and also as accurate as possible the uh, bottom of the wig. Okay. So basically this is the bottom and top wig. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So KSM is actually has very crazy price action because it just goes up, down, up, down, up, down, like I don't know what is going on here, <coughs> but yeah, it's even more vo volatile than uh, bi Bitcoin because <laughs> there's not even uh, really a bull market except for this, and then it just crashes but finds its way back up and it makes an all time high. Very crazy price action. This is for me very crazy. Okay, so the FIP circle, yeah. So they give me a, um, they let me see how the price no, no, can no, no, no. move. Because the price, oh, the price doesn't just go up and down. Hmm? It looks that way. But it can also go diagonal. It can, you know, move in a circle like this. Yeah. So, of course, it just goes down and then the next day down again. Yeah. But this actually makes it move along with the FIP circle. So you can predict the path. This is a group of the... Um, the uh, yeah. The gente que está haciendo so, el... the bull run. We have the bull run, yeah? It gets rejected. It falls down on support line, on the support line of the GAN fan. So actually, this is just a GAN fan line. Okay? And it stays in the ranges, and it um, 
gets to a fifth circle and it moves around and then it hits another support and it bounces back up finds its way back again in the same range so this area looks like a medium price it looks like the right price to to buy yeah so it's not overbought, not over oversold. But as you can see, the price is trending down, actually. Yes. So right here, you could already have drawn the trend down. Even though it spiked back up for a few days. Yeah. And back down. Look at this candle. <laughs> wow. Huge. This big, I have never big seen big that candle. much of very huge candle. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. What day is this? I think this was was this the drop? Yeah, so this was well, not the Bitcoin drop. I think the Bitcoin drop was a little earlier, but this yeah, one candle, one. Oh. wow, is 66 percent in one day. I mean, imagine if you would have been on a plane or something, you know, <laughs> or doing groceries or I don't know work. Wow, and you, got a, and you look crazy. at the sun and got dumb crazy. So hard. That's crazy. This, can we, this, like, this. as it can be identify like how many uh, volume has been gone on that day? Yeah, uh, I think so. I need to, can you see like this? How many yeah. coins have been sold on that day? Oh, uh, I don't know how many coins, but uh, but volume we can identify. Yeah. Okay, it says um, 269k volume. So I'm not sure if that's million or sell orders. I don't know. Where did you but, see that? So, okay, over here. I yeah, got it. Yeah? Like on the yeah, left, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, just let's track, track the price action again just to see how accurate our lines are yeah it drops yes. down and it finds support again and it doesn't only find support you know like one of the reason you know, one of the reason why i wanted to learn is just because of this like you know we can see the pattern over here like we can yeah. identify that lines that the range is this and yeah. it is really good to identify the history in Yanfan. So it, it respects the lines yes. until it drops or bumps heav heavily. But when it gets, you know, rejected and retraces, it actually respects this line again as support, shoots back up to, to this line. And yeah, you know, just again, support here. See, this, so it's actually quite ac accurate. It's quite accurate. But you cannot just draw this and say, well, the price is going to move like this. That's, that's not how it works. I tried. No, it's not how it works. You, you need to, you know, um, have knowledge about Elliott waves, have knowledge about the RSI, have knowledge about moving averages, you know, and combine all these things to see what it could be doing in the next few days because if i want to make a prediction where the price will be in let's say december 2021 based on this well, it's actually quite hard i mean i need need, need to be lucky you know and I, I need to say okay well it's going to shoot up and respect this line and then uh, it goes like this and finds this race up i mean it could be possible it's, it's not a weird price action but it depends on Bitcoin, you know, it depends on us, it depends on uh, what hap happens in the world. Oh, so, yeah. So that's why you always use your indicators together with the uh, support lines and stuff like that. Okay, so what do I do now? Yeah, this is always the part where it's actually very hard. I find it hard because. 
I see where the price is at. It's actually pretty low. It's not far off from a uh, um, as you said. Area. As you said, like it, I think it it will be the same. Like as you said, like it will hit around like a bit of four hundred or something in the end of the year. Four hundred here. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. Down below because the, I hold case. And, no, 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 no. Below four hundred. Below four hundred. It might can him hit if it is. It has to. Below four hundred on the. You see that the line, second line that you have of. Uh, yeah, that that line. It's like no, no above uh, or yes, this line. So you think the price is going going there? Uh, yeah, I believe like it can hit. I don't know. It could, you know, it could. Yes. But yeah, it could also just drop. Mm, yes. I mean, that's also possible. So that's that's why I say, just drawing these lines will not tell you where the price is going. Yeah. It, it gives it gives you ranges where it could go. So depends on how strong the coin is. Yeah. So if yes. the coin is not so strong, it will maybe move up and get get rejected and do some something like that. But if the coin is very strong and Bitcoin uh, maintains to be bullish, uh, it could be a different different story. Will it trend slowly up? Or will it just, you know, I mean, we have the previous price action. Or will it just yeah. do do this again and, uh, yeah, we don't know. <laughs> so, but what we do want to know, yeah, is what will it do in the next seven days or so, so in the coming week. Well, I identify what the price has been doing in the last waves. So we have a drop. Very big drop, it finds support, it bounces to the 1.6 and bounces again to well, the 1, 1 ratio, yeah? So we have our ABC correction. Mm -hmm. What are you correcting, Alex? <laughs> you cannot correct the price. How many times do I have to tell you? Or maybe, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you cannot correct the price. That's true. However, I didn't name the uh, tool. So. so, this could be the, yeah, the beginning of the first impulse wave. Uh -huh. And let's say this is the the first wave ending okay okay then i take the fib and now i'm just speculating because i i don't have you know the full price action i i don't know if it goes up or down i don't know okay it could also be this uh week because i have some little retracement here it's also possible so let's con consider that that one Okay, we have a little retracement here, and then the third wave typically ends at the 1.618 FIB ratio. So that's over here. Okay. Okay. Then the drop has to uh, stay above the one. If it drops below, then your Elliott wave is invalidated so then this fifth wave will not be here it will probably do something like this okay so the third wave has to be I mean the retracement after the third wave has to be above the one and most of the time what I see is that it retraces back to these levels the 1.4 and the 1.2 so now I know the price ranges, the up and down, but I also want to uh, see, okay, where, you know, will it bounce in, in form of the timeline? 
I don't know, but I think, yeah, if I respect the, if I respect the uh, can fan lines and the fib lines and stuff like that, I think it will do something like this. Okay. Add some uh, devils here. Let's add some devils. This one. Yeah, that, that's a nice one. Yeah, this uh, this the two point six, one eight. I'll be on. But this could be the coming price action. Yeah, but this is just purely based on lines and yeah, so resistance and. Uh, So let's see how it worked out. And actually, without seeing the uh, horizontals, we were pretty close. So we actually, you know, can do this. Um, yeah, just based on knowledge on the Elliott waves, a FIP circle, and a few lines. Well, and you don't even have to have the horizontals. Of course you do, because you want to know what the price ranges are, but I just hit them and we still have around the same prediction. Could be something like this. Can place that here. I'll hide the... Uh, Tip retracement for a second. But this is what it could be doing just based on the FIP, uh, the FIP retracement tool. I think it's called. And knowledge on the elite waves and respecting the lines. And as you can see, this line, is this a line? Yes, this is a line. This is a support line based on the GAN fan mm -hmm. process. So this was actually where we drew our fib. Okay, this is... Uh, I'm a bit neurotic. I need to have straight lines, but it's not really being straight. But we we, we drew the fib here, right? Because this, this was top in our eyes. Because after that candle, it dropped. To this low, and you see yep. that it actually respects the can fan resistance and support lines, which I didn't draw myself actually. Yeah, I just used the crosses. Keep that in mind. I only yep. use the crosses. Yes. So now, what do we see again? It's wicked above, but it's being rejected for now. On the same level. Yes. And that's actually quite accurate. So now we're just waiting until it uh, goes above. So that's why, yeah, you guys got in in 232 or 231, two, I mean, and you were 234. So I'm actually quite interested in um, Starlight that you got in on the 1st of August or. Yesterday today. or today? Today. 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 Yes. So did you expect the price to break? Yeah. Okay. So you were actually seeing this this line. Right. I, 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 I was expecting it to uh, to to break indeed, but I, I, guess I was break, wrong. <laughs> what will be the break point of this uh, point, Alex? Like if if you were to if you were, if it were to break out, then, <coughs> then where will it go? Yes, this is always the question. <laughs> okay. Like in the, in the, like 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 take the Fibonacci level and by looking at the Fibonacci level from this price to if it happens if the breakout happens then what will be the next point? Well, I already draw draw it. Yeah, like this one, this level. Okay. Two, but three. yeah, okay. and how it gets there? Yeah, it could you know can be a rocky ride.
could be something i mean on on the daily yeah just be the next candle and the next candle and maybe like this and then gets rejected and it goes like this it could 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 happen i don't know but this area yeah i'm looking at this area and i put the three where the lines cross could also be there but it needs to pass this 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 resistance line it's also possible that's not you know impossible it could also get rejected here but because we draw the fib and it says the 1.6 is here yeah so that that's why i draw it over i i put put the three at the cross because this is not the 1.6 over here actually we have huh? actually faith also before this chart i think faith also uh, told us in the group that the it is possibly go to the 288 i think she also does the fibonacci level on this chart uh, that's why i guess she told me like she told us in the group to the 288 yes the same yes. same level yes Watch. the same line mm -hmm. so that's that's why i said look what faith probably did was take the wigs and draw a line and take this wig and draw a line and take this wig and draw that line so she just you know uses the wigs mm -hmm. i don't because when i draw the wigs and i see this i'm going to draw a lot of lines and you know you could but on the daily it's not really accurate because it's and it's not meaningful but if you would zoom in on the hour and and 15 then you would see how accurate these lines actually are yeah yeah i agree she agrees <laughs> good i agree because what happens is that we can test it on the daily sometimes you you have a very long wig and when you actually zoom out on the four hour it's it's not like that you know it plays a different story and then you'll be amazed at the lines you know so um usually for me when i draw the lines the horizontals i do it on the daily in like a thicker color so usually daily is papoor for me and the four hour resistance also really matters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alex, you're cluttering the chart. <laughs> yes. I'm exaggerating. <laughs> so I want to show them. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the four hour also really matters because this is a long trading time frame, actually. You know? If you take 24 and divide by four, it's a, it's a long time frame. So it, the resistance on the four hour matters for me. So I just usually do the, the daily. And then I also do the, I do the four hour as well. Yeah. And that's it. So those should actually be enough for you to play around with. Yes, this is more than enough. This is too too much, but it's too I'm, much. I'm just gonna draw it anyway. So this is actually how I did it in the start. I would draw all these lines because all these lines I I saw all these lines. And I was like, what what do I have to do with with, with these lines? I don't know, I'm just gonna draw it and then I can we yeah, see, see can what happens. Alex, can we <laughs> then I would zoom in. Huh? Can we automate uh, this line, like just put the formula or something like, and the lines comes uh, come up automatically? <laughs> I don't think so. What, uh, you know, okay. I would also recommend not to. Because yeah. the most important indicator is what? 
the most important indicators and tools. Mm -hmm. Your eyes and your brain. If you're not able to see the lines, yeah, it's going to be very hard to trade ranges. Yes. Uh, today, BTC Emperor has shared his PDF on price ranges of Bitcoin. Has anyone, anybody looked at uh, on that PDF file that he sent? No, I have not. Could you please share? Okay, I think, uh, uh, did you not join his group? Uh, yeah, you know? I have. But Asim is giving me too much homework. <laughs> Let me give you an example of a trading range. We just drew the support lines. Uh -huh. And let's say this price action hasn't happened. Okay? So we could have drawn these lines already based on this part. So that's fair to say, right? So then you would have seen that the price is actually you know ranging between two boxes a smaller and a larger box or just a a, a, a thick I shouldn't I shouldn't mess with the lines just this uh, black one and this black one and then in between you could also adjust it you know to something like this but let's just use the lines that we have drawn. And this is your trading range. If you would spot the bottom using also indicators, MAs, yeah, e EMAs or MAs. From the, the bottom to the top is almost 4%. For a quick trade, and maybe you use leverage, I don't know. That's pretty good. And if you trade the inner ranges, it's almost 2%. I mean, then, yeah, I don't know what, what, what your guys' yeah, capital is, but let's say you would draw, uh, would trade a thousand euros and make 2% on a trade, use leverage times 10, it's 20%. That's 200 euros in one trade. And it will have, this is the 50 minute of this candle alone. That was 50 minute trade. <laughs> yeah. But okay, let's, let's be fair. You'll trade it from this to there. It's like, uh, one hour and 50 minutes rate then you're done for the rest of the week you're done for the rest of the week yes brother but unfortunately and we are not uh, we have not taken that trade <laughs> but no that's an example i mean this mm. trade you you can also spot in the future mm. let's say the price drops Drop back down again down. okay, okay. So it will draw back on this line. This, I don't know. I'm ec echoing. Is this right? If it draws, if the price drops back to these lines, you already have the trading ranges. Yes. You just need to map this. So this is another trading range. Yeah. Like this. This is another trading range. And this is a bear trap. So let's say it drops. Then you're just waiting to hit this box. You could also short here. This is another trading range. Yeah, so that's how it works. And this is also another trading range. So 
So you just, you know, draw boxes and trade them. So how do you define a trading range? How do I find trading range? How do you define that? So I what constitutes by... a trading range? Can you repeat the last one? So, last so what, what, how do I know that it's a trading range? How do I see that? Oh. Well, you brought support lines. Okay, somebody is... Let's see, Sohail. Yes. Sohail, can you yes, mute, mute yourself? No, brother, I, 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 am, I don't have iPhone <laughs> now. I don't have iPhone, so it is the tune of iPhone, and my phone is already on silent. Oh. Okay. 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 It's okay. So you, um, you uh, define the trading ranges by starting on the daily, and let's say you don't draw this uh, fit things and all all, all this Gantt thing. You just start on the daily and you start drawing the wigs. Okay. If you have drawn all the wigs, or the most important wigs, you go on four hour, you do the same. Mm -hmm. And then you can define training ranges. Why? Even if I wouldn't have the lines, so I'm gonna delete the lines now. You can look for um, price action. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, oh. Let me make, yeah. let me make sure. Oh. So price action is where there's a lot of it's it's literally so where's the there's a lot of action happening, right? Yes. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. So then if you have price action in, within, let's say, on Bitcoin, if you identify the zone where you're seeing, um, let's say, 40,000 to 30,000, and there's so much going on there, so that's, that's a trading range. If it's not too tight, you, if you're a scalper, it doesn't matter. But if you're not a scalper and you see that the ranges are too tight, then that's not for you. Also, to identify supply and demand zones. How do you identify supply and demand zones when you see all these long wicks basically pushing from up? Uh, sorry, so if you identify in demand zone, you see long wicks pushing from the bottom of the chart upwards. So the buying pressure, the buyers are pushing the price up. So the candles have these really long wicks from the bottom. That's your demand zone. And your supply zone is where you have all these long wicks pushing the price from up. So then the middle part of whatever you have, that's what you call a range. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You should look at the both PDF file that he has shared, BTC Emperor. He actually, uh, it is very no, uh, good to actually do as a beginner. Okay, so, you know, we're all different kinds of traders. Probably Faith would have waited for this week here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But uh, I'll just play it safe and, you know, just place a buy order. Because I'm pretty confident that it will hit, hit the... Hit the uh, at the uh, support line. But yeah, you can play it like Faith does, just on the absolute way. You can place a buy order and a sell order. And I will just do it, for example, here. Because this is my style. 
I like it safe. I don't so, want to miss the op op opportunity. So this would be more for uh, long-term day trading, right? So no scalping uh, stuff. You can also use. Yeah, what's 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 long term day day, day trading? Oh, well, swing trading, I think it's uh, called. It's it's called what? Swing trading. Swing trading, yeah. Swing trading, yeah, can um, be between one and seven days or something. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I define day trading as in within the day. Okay. So. Then, then you need to start to look at the time frames and how, how many candles you want to trade. So if you want to trade within the day, yeah, then I suggest the 50 minute or the one hour. Yeah. yeah. And then I can visualize that for you. Let's say you're buying here, you want to trade, trade a day. That's we're on the hour. Yeah. So that's this, this, this range. So actually, it's a good, good range. So then you would have traded this area. Pretty good. That right? would be dream come true. Yeah, I hope so for you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is a. Uh, I th how how I do it? I think fate also maybe a little bit diff different, but you know I think the basis is the same. So if you would look at it now, what would be the the, the what would it do? But um, if you look at the price ranges and and the lines that you draw, so if you look at it now, it's like. On two hundred and twenty-nine dollars, mm -hmm. what is what could it do? Where could it go um, from here? Well, like I said, it, it's right now. It's actually retesting a support line. Mm -hmm. So if it holds, it will just do this. I think so. It will go up. According to the FIP circle, mm -hmm. that is one option. The other option is because we drew the uh, the uh, Elliott wave impulses. I don't know what we did, but something like this. And then we saw that the price could go here. So, yeah, you need to you know make it a bit realistic. I think this is realistic. What you can also do is look at the previous price action because the I think price action so, always repeats itself. Hmm. Go ahead, Faith. I think also what Starlight, so she's asking what the price is difficult for new people to. For me, I, I can see exactly what you're saying, Alex, but. Mm -hmm. A really new person can't because I, I used to have all this in my head. How? How? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, like how? Why is it going yeah. up? Why is that yeah. line holding yeah. it? Why, why, I would think that support why can and it go down? down? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I would think that is resistance and it would go down. That's what I yeah. think. Exactly. Why, yeah. Exactly. So then uh, you're asking you yourself, it? where is it going? Number one, you want to look at the pattern. But like Alex says, if you're asking yourself, where is it going? You're asking yourself, where is it going in the next hour, in the next two, you know, um, in the next tomorrow, yeah. you know, it depends what you want to do with it, you know. Yeah. So then uh, you'd look at the volume. What's the volume doing? Do we have enough volume to push the price up if it hits the support? You know, then you look at the, what the RSI is doing. Then you look at how the moving averages are reacting. 
these are all ways to, you know, try yeah. and uh, see what the price is going to do. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, exactly. So, RSI is a very good indicator, and I use that a lot. I use the volume as well. So, right now, the volume on Kusama actually looks good to me. It's not bad. No, Alex? It's good. It's not yeah, dry. It's, it's quite, uh, yeah, it's quite yeah. pumping. It's so really we have good. a di- divergence on the RSI. On the, yeah, on the RSI. So, so this is actually bullish. So yeah. that's good. So then yeah. those are two things already. The volume is good. RS, you have a, a divergence on the RSI. The volume's good. The support is strong enough because I'm assuming this is daily support. So if it's support on the daily, it's very strong. If it's on the four hour, it's fair. You know, it's it's also not that easy to break in one go usually. Then, most importantly, in crypto, you want to look at what Bitcoin's doing. No. You want to okay. look at what Bitcoin's doing. And if Bitcoin's good, uh, RSI is okay, volume is good, then you'll want to look at the pattern, you know, to try and figure out where it's going. What do you have in this pattern now? Um, earlier, you had an inverse head and shoulders. But that has already played out, you know. Oh, so right now, now mm-hmm. that's bearish. The uh, divergence is bearish. So it's on the one hour. So you probably have a few hours downside, like this. The EMAs confirm it, or uh, sorry, the MAs confirm it. So. What we see is that the price drops through the EMA like this. Holds the and support and then goes back right. out. Yeah. So Yeah. And then the EMA is uh, oh no, the first thing to or they can not cross or they will just touch or this can happen. Mm. Yeah. So over twice. The RSI, you can actually print a chart where you just look. I have one on I have one on my iPad. So when I'm doing the RSI, I just look at it. I haven't fully grasped it because it still confuses me a bit. But yeah, you can print the chart, you know, and just have it with you and it will help you to read it easy really easily so yeah in this case i would say the support is going to hold and the price is going to bounce then you can use whatever indicators you want to add on you know it's uh moving averages whatever you want to you know add on but yeah that's it and when you say there's a divergence on the RSI, is that yeah. is that the above the seventy range? No, what it what it means doesn't is doesn't necessarily the, have. Yeah, okay, go on, Alex. No, oh, sorry. What what it means is that the RSI is actually doing something else than the price action. So right here, the RSI is dropping. So you can actually draw a trend line. If you would draw the trend line from the same um, hourly candle and draw a trend line, it's a different trend line because this is upwards and this is downwards. So we just check the RSI cheat sheet. Cheat sheet. <laughs> that was <laughs> trouble saying this. Cheat sheet. <laughs> then we see. Uh, let's do it. Just say chit chat. Chit chat. <laughs> there is TS. 
Where's the picture? Wow, that's not... Aha, okay, well, it's not very bad. But we see the uh, price here going up. As in uh, the chart of uh, Kusama, and we see the RSI going down. So, it, it, yeah, it says the indicator makes bearish a lower high divergence. and the price makes a higher high. Mm -hmm. And it says it's a bearish divergence. So that oh, means the next move will go down. Wow. Yeah. And it actually okay. does drop. Uh, well, I it's on the hour. <laughs> That's great. But yeah, it's no. on the. But it's on the hour and you what? have to yeah. pop there. So what is going to happen is it's going to hit that support and it's going to go back. This is what I see in this yes. case. And for I, uh, I also believe like... Uh, yeah, at the daily it's going to do something and... like that. Yeah. Something like but that, yeah. Keep in mind, this is... All these coins are married to BTC. So most of these coins are chained to BTC, fortunately or unfortunately. So if BTC falls, Kusama will fall. You know what I mean? And that's why I find it very, uh, because I, I live in Europe and I'm going to bed, bed soon. I find it yeah. very... Um, oh, yes. You know, dangerous to to sleep while not not knowing what BTC is going to do at the mm. moment. Okay. Yeah. Maybe ten ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Minute. Close. Sorry. Oh, you you're going take to over pray. The yeah. You want to take no, over, I, over the screen? No, I can't. We've turned the light on. I'm at my mum's, and I sh I don't oh. I don't um, I share this room with my sister and my nephew, oh. <laughs> so I can't mm -hmm. turn on the light. I don't want to be rude, but okay. Okay, I'll be just ten minutes. Uh, yeah? yeah, but we can we can talk. Ten minutes is short. We we can talk. And yes, we'll talk. <laughs> I don't know if people have any questions or people or we just chill out till we wait for Alex to come back. Hi guys. Hey. Hi. <laughs> yes, I like so how long have you been trading? Um, two weeks. What? Two weeks? Yeah, I think so. Two, maybe three weeks. Uh, okay. I have been holding since May, and I was uh, just before the crash. Yeah. So okay. uh, I was. Uh, I think I was one of the, the ones that FOMO'd in. And then came the crash, and then, then I was like, okay, <laughs> I have to find yeah. something else. But that was good because I discovered trading. I was like, okay, if I do this and that, you know, it's going to make me more money if I'm good at it, of course. Yeah. So then I started yeah. learning and uh, following you guys also on the chat as well as I could. And then... Um, you know, I was afraid at first, but then two or three weeks ago, I just started. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, at least you're in a, in a good place, you know. I wish I had a community like this one to help me when I had just started. Maybe I don't have lost, you know, a lot of money. Uh -huh. But you're in the right place, I'd say. There's a lot to learn, but we're all learning every day. And if you dedicate and put in the time and work, then yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah. It's not rocket science. You will, with time, the chats start to add up and to communicate. But in the beginning, it's difficult, I know.
even yeah. when people tell you you know all these things with candles it's, it's it seems like rocket science uh-huh. but it's not well gun fun still rocket science to me <laughs> have to say seriously i i can't it makes me nervous it makes me nervous yeah it's just <laughs> When I saw her drawing all these lines, I was like, oh my God. And then right now I'm looking at the Kusama chart and right at where you guys saying that it was uh, support or yeah, support. So 229, it starts to go up and I'm like, how is this possible? How, you know? Yeah, it is. It is. Math isn't is amazing uh-huh. but yeah so you if you have to just find your age basically because for me i feel like gun sounds amazing but i'm just like i get the same point as you know alex uh-huh. has on his chart so uh, I'm, i'd rather have a less cluttered chart in my opinion because also uh-huh. chats with so many things I can't think, you know. I'd rather just keep it simple, have my trend lines, have um, maybe my waves, and that's it. Trend lines, horizontal support resistance, mm-hmm. that's it for me. I think that's my age. But yeah, I'm really curious how you do that, and uh, excited for the for the call if you have time next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next week, I'll I'll definitely have time. And I can do a lesson to show you guys how I find um, support and resistance, just the basics, like Uh support, resistance, volume is very straightforward, really. And maybe how to find a tread setup, you know? These are things, and there's so many things that I find in crypto that people don't talk about, you know? And I'm just like, why don't people talk about that? And yet it's very important. But maybe it's also because people, I think maybe most people just watch BTC and um, the coin that they're trading in that minute. But there's so many things in crypto that I've found very useful and they actually work, you know? And right. Yeah. And they they help to have a certain level of accuracy. Like the total market cap, you know? Mm-hmm. The total one, total two. These are important. And in this last week, no, yesterday is when I really, really understood that these things you know work hand in hand because yesterday total two i think yesterday yesterday but one total two was breaking up the total market cap was doing the same so all these things for me were you know bullish there were all signs that we're going up but of course um then you have bitcoin dominance it was dropping for three days or 48 hours literally straight out it was taking a bitting and of course what does this mean it means alts are going to have a party you know so then we started seeing alts rallying up it's insane and people will tell you that maybe it does not work you know, I do, but for me, I think it does. Bitcoin dominance matters because when it's going down, I'll start to recover. Mm-hmm. It does. Total two matters because then you can estimate where the market is, what price range we're going to be in. When you know if total two is at resistance, you know that alts will start to bleed a little bit sometimes. You know, if it has broken up, you'll see alts starting to look more green. So, all these things then the if BTC pair, this is something that nobody told me about, I think, until two weeks ago when I, you know, I discovered it myself. And then I started reading and researching more about it. 
And then I found that the traders that actually also use it, it's insane how if BTC pair sets the trend, like it broke out. This was also another confirmation for me that we were going up because if BTC pair broke up yesterday, actually, Bitcoin dominance was falling. Uh, total 2 was breaking out. Total 1 was increasing as well. So, yeah, these were all signs that we were going up. And there were all signs that we were going to break structure for me in this case. It made sense. Another thing people don't tell you, market psychology, you know, what are the market makers going to do? Mm-hmm. It didn't make a lot of sense for me for us to keep going down, down, down. And that's why I think when we were at the board, I actually longed from when we held support i longed it's unfortunate that i exited early but it did make sense to me for us to keep going down to 24 at that time it is what the structure was demanding what the structure was showing because we have so much money in the market in between um in between 28 to you know, 20K that has not yet been taken out. But there was no way the market makers are also just going to give free money to shorters. It doesn't make sense, you know. They need to make the market choppy. They need to get liquidity for the market, you know. So there's no way we're just going to keep going down. They had to liquidate shorts, There was no way. So market psychology is also very important. If you can find books about market psychology or even just position yourself as a market maker. You say, I have a situation with liquidity. What do I do right now to get, you know, liquidity? Just position yourself as a market maker and sometimes you'll have the answers in front of you. Wow, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome.